Hi everyone, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about an exam called Oscar. And I know many, many of you asked me to film this type of video a long time ago, and I do apologize that I didn't have time or opportunity to do this earlier. But now we are in September, and I know that you will be having your Oscar somewhat um, mid of October or the end of October, but definitely you have to complete it before you go on your final placement of the semester so um yeah so i will show you just my experience of what i had during my oscars so let's start about just explaining what oscar is oscar is a type of exam that usually nursing students take during their diploma of enrolled nursing whether it's a TIFE or other um, private education provider so this exam consists of two parts your first part is going to be your practical part and you will be tested on performance on certain tasks or assessments in the labs settings and your second part is your theory part you will be asked to write down certain tasks and it's usually a written piece only so, um, first part usually takes about 20 or 15 minutes, and then the second part, I think we've been given about 20 as well or 30 minutes to complete. So, OSCA exam will be for you once per semester. So, if you have three semesters in your Diploma of Enroll Nursing, it means during the whole course you will have three OSCA exams, okay, one per semester. And usually it's sort of like towards the end of the semester but definitely before your clinical placement and in order to go to your clinical placement you actually have to pass your OSCA exam. OSCA exam doesn't have any gradings, it's either pass or fail and uh, yeah it's just one time attend. So saying that let's share what I had during my OSCAs. So in semester one I was tested on um, vital signs I was tested on neurological observations assessment, pain assessment, and then the theory part. So your semester one placement is going to be in aged care facilities. D due to old age of uh, residents of the aged care facilities and some physical uh, comorbidities, you know, or disabilities and stuff like this, they will have a lot of falls unfortunately this could be also due to uh, UTIs this could be due to dehydration uh, hypoglycemia if someone is diabetic um, this could be due to confusion delirium dementia and things like this weakness you know in muscles and just you know due to the age itself as well so unfortunately a lot of residents do have falls you as a nurse will need to know what to do if someone had a fall so one of the things that you will need to do is do assessment on vital signs so you will need to measure blood pressure respiration rate oxygen level heart rate and temperature okay and you will need to write all your findings into observation chart i wish i could have one to show you guys but i'm sure you probably have seen it many many times because prior to the oscar in your semester one you've probably had lots of practice in your labs doing vital signs on each other so during the oscar exam your teacher is going to be playing a role of a patient and she will be your assessor okay so you will be given a scenario i had a scenario with the patient who had the fall this scenario is going to be printed out on a paper will be given to you when you go inside the labs and you will have five minutes to read it think about it make a plan action action plan <laughs> in your head and then go and do all the necessarily assessments on your teacher which will be your patient okay so when you do the vital signs on the teacher you will literally be using you know your stethoscope your pressure cuff here you know so you will need to do everything manually you will need to do um oximeter you use oximeter for measuring the oxygen level and you will need to do uh your heart rate manually on a hand just measuring it from the pulse you will need to count you will need to see if the pulse regular or irregular and if it's weak 
or strong okay so you will need to do that when you do the respiration count just also see the chest assess the chest you know for rise and fall and things like that uh, when you write your findings in the observation chart you have to remember that you as EN working under supervision of RN and of course you are a student so you will need to be co-signed at the bottom with the other nurse this is for safety of the patient also for safety of you as the EN student so you will need to mention that to the teacher then because you will be performing things on your teacher the vital signs might be all right on the teacher so they may tell you for example what are the abnormal ranges for blood pressure just to know that you understand it you know so you have to answer that or they may ask you what are what are the normal ranges for um, heart rate and things like that you know excuse me guys i'm just going to mute my phone because it's a bit disturbing okay so they will ask you all these things you know just to know whether you know the normal ranges you know to distinguish them from abnormal ranges when you have someone who actually has something that is abnormal then uh, for example in ops chart you will have a part on the side says to you that if someone for example q add score which is your final score is more than zero like for example from one to two what to do in this case so it says there to notify the team leader like i'm trying to remember now as much as i can if it's more than two you have to take another action so it's all written for you there so for safety of patient and you as a health practitioner you need to take a certain action okay so you will need to explain that to the teacher then for neurological ops i have a chart here that i want to show you so if someone had a fall okay you will need to do neurological assessment on that patient okay and this is very common again in hk facilities and you will see a lot of nurses actually perform that this neurological assessment consists of few parts and i'm sure you've seen it many many times in labs and you would be practicing this during your first semester so you will need to know how to assess the eyes of the patient how to assess patient for verbal response by maybe that's just my cat for maybe uh by following tpp technique this is something that we've been taught so t stands for time you ask patient you know what day we are in or what month what year then p stands for place if they know where they are you can ask them and second p stands for person you can ask them do they know their partner's name and things like that okay then for motor response you can ask them to stretch their arms touch the nose you know on both sides and things like that and then for further motor response at the bottom here you can ask them to squeeze your hands and you can ask them to move their legs and feet inwards outwards and resist to the pressure that you will apply with your hand all of these also can be found on youtube as well and it should be in your learning materials for us tafe used to provide a lot of videos practical videos that we could watch and learn from it like it was different types of assessments how to take vital signs how to do neurovascular neurological ops and things like that according to the materials that you study in particular semesters so you can just assess one of the learning resources at connect this is one of the pl platforms that they used to use at TAFE it's called TAFE connect, TAFE connect. And you can find all the videos there but also if you want to see more videos you can go to videos on YouTube YouTube has lots of different nursing videos on different type of assessments and you can learn from there as well because every nurse has their own approach sort of things so you, you may find more additional informa information to what you already know or have seen from your own teachers at TAIF okay so that was it for that this is all what I've done for my practical. Then for my theory part, we had, we've been given a piece of paper that had uh, nursing definitions. Like for example, they wanted to know what means hypertension, what means being febrile, what means uh, hypoxic and things like that, if patient is hypoxic. So you will need to write down what does it mean. Or they may ask you actually paraphrase it and ask you if the patient has abnormal temperature level, how would you call it from the medical perspective? So you will need to say that it's called fe febrile and things like that. Um, they may ask you on a paper what are the normal ranges for this and this you have to write it down from that number to that number and things like that and that would be it once you finish your theory part you you will give your paper to the teacher she will check it on a spot and you will know the result 
of your Oscar at the same day. So you will know whether you failed or you passed. You don't have to wait for weeks like you would do with different type of assessment. Okay, so this one you will know on a spot and then after that you will have your placement. Then for semester two, you will be studying already medication administration. Okay, and of course it will become part of your assessment. Okay, so for me, uh, we were tested on subcut of uh, heparin, so subcut injection of heparin. Um, then we were asked to revise medication called frizimide. So for heparin and frizimide, you have to know what these medications are administered for. So you need to know the, what's the use of this, uh, of this medication, what they are for. You need to know the side effects and you will need to know the routes of administration. Okay, so all of that will be told to you by the teachers to revise, you know, and get yourself ready and familiar. And you will also will be practicing all of that in labs as well. So it's not like you never practice it and then you will have it in your exam. No, you will have chance to practice it many, many times in labs. Okay, um, the reason why you need to know information about medication also is because one of the nursing standards for practice teach us that we need to educate our patients. Okay, so you will need to know information about that medication so you can deliver that information to the patient. If they ask you, why are you giving me this medication? So you can't just say, ah, oh, because the or because the doctor ordered it. Like you need to explain to them what this medication is for and what side effects to look for. So then you know, if they feel like if they feel like they have nausea, you know, or stomach pain, you know, things like that, they can actually use the call bell to buzz you, and you can come, you know, and have a look at them and things like this, and take take appropriate action. Um, so, when you will be doing your subcut, you're not going to be doing this on a teacher as you've done with your first <laughs> uh, Oscar when you were doing vital signs. Nobody will ask you to do injections on teachers. Um, so you will be given a mannequin or you will be given a piece of foam like that and you will be doing your injection on that. So just remember with any Oscar exam, you will need to start it by going and washing your hands, following the proper hygiene, you know, when you're assessing the patient as well, before and after the procedure, touching of the surroundings and things like that, you know, follow all the septic techniques if it needs to be done when you do injections and things like that then remember because it's a medication administration you need to follow the safe patient rights check so right dose right route right medication you know <clears throat> right date see if the order is valid if it's signed by the doctor you know um, check for allergies you know and things like this check for expiry date not just the medication by itself but also syringes that you use or any diluted materials and things like that uh, and um, yeah, and remember, always check, you know, with the second nurse when it needed, okay? When you do any medication, do the first check when you're preparing the medication and then the second check near the bedside of the patient against his wrist as well. Check the wrist and details on it and also um, uh, against the order of the medication. And when you administer, you need to co-sign it, okay? Um, so that would be for that. Also, your second Oscar will start not by giving you scenario on a paper, but it will start with the handover because your second semester you will be going already in your placement to the hospital settings not to aged care facilities. So most of the shifts in hospitals, I, would, I should say all the shifts in hospitals start with handover. So the previous shift give handover to the current shift and you have to learn how to receive a handover, how to take certain notes, you know, and things like that. So this is how your Oscar will start in your semester two. You will be given the handover and this is, will be your sort of like a scenario, you know, about the patient. Um, so apart from medication administration, you will need to do as usual vital signs, you know, on your teacher, you know, and things like that. Um, take consent, you know, before you do anything from the patient, always remember to take consent. It's very important. Educate patients on the procedures, whatever you do and follow the hand hygiene, medication checks, calculations. So not just heparin you will be administering or frizimide, you will be administering other type of medications that will be in a medication order. For example, in your scenario or in a handover, you will be given a time. Let's say they will tell you, okay, in a handover now, you are in a hospital starting your, let's say, morning shift. So it's 6.30 or 7 o'clock, which means that the patients usually before breakfast will have lots of other oral medications. So you will need to go to the bed chart 
uh, take it, have a look what medications is written there for this patient, you know, let's say at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, and you will need to administer those as well. Do your calculations, you know, those required over the stock dose and things like that. You're not going to be doing any pediatric calculations for your second OSCA, like it would be no children, it's just adults. Okay, so it's like a basic formula. So you're not going to be tested on IVs. Well, at least I haven't been or any other students in my class. We were not tested on IVs. Okay, I think it's just subcut oral and it could be IM intramuscular as well, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, so it could be different a little bit to you. And then that would be for your um, practical part. You know, you may be tested on neurovascular or neurological ops according to the scenario in a handover you know like what patient has exactly so you just have to like go from there then for your theory part you will be asked to write a handover okay sorry not the handover a progress note so whatever you've been doing during your uh, practical assessment you know you have to write it down in your progress note okay and try to make the progress note as professional as it could be as if you would be in a hospital because you as a student during your second placement you will be practicing during your hand um, practicing writing progress notes you know and they will be need they will need to be checked and co-signed by the by the nurses they will be uh guiding you so um uh, in oscar just try to make it as professional and correct you know and close to the point as it could be okay you will be practicing to do progress notes before your oscar you will be practicing probably like on every single lab in the end and the teachers will be checking it for you and correcting you and just telling you whether something else needs to be added you know or something else needs to be changed and things like that so before you oscar you will be somehow knowing already what the what the professional way of writing the progress note progress note is okay i'm losing my speech now <laughs> um so that was it pretty much for um for second Oscar. For your third Oscar, uh, you will be learning already diabetes, okay, and you will be having a lot of scenarios for chest pain. And I don't remember if you will be doing dressings in your second semester or third. I think dressings are on second semester, but we were not tested for dressings. Okay, so dressings change and management and wound care and all of that was not part of the OSCAR for any of the semesters, okay? This was just for us like this, so is IVs, they were not part of the OSCARs, but it could be different for each year students, you know, at type. I don't know, maybe they changed it, maybe not, I'm not sure. So, for uh Oscar 3, you will have angina, which is your chest pain, and ad administration of GTN, which is your adrenaline. You will need to know what uh, GTN does mean. Administering for if there are any um, situations when you where you would not administer, like for example, if the blood pressure is low, you know, below certain points, so you will need to revise that, or a heart rate and things like that. How many times you can give GTN, you know, the route of administration, how often do you need to check after administration of GT and the uh, pain score and things like that? You know, what the doses of each administration and things like that. So you will need to revise that. As for hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia, this is re uh, related to your diabetes. We were tested only on hypoglycemia, okay? Hyper was not part of the OSCAR, but again, it could be different for you guys. So for hypo, I have here for you insulin subcontinuous order and blood glucose record. At the back here, you have hypoglycemia management in diabetes. This is a plan what you need to do, like literally in steps, when you have someone who have a hypoglycemic episode, when your blood sugar levels are, be are below four. And also because of this, you will be tested as well on administration of IM intramuscular of glucagon, okay? So if your patient, for example, is unconscious or kneel by mouth for any reasons, you, will, you may need to give um, injection of glucagon. So you will have all of that there. And then once you administer that, you will need to follow and recheck BGLs, you know, and they will tell you all the steps here at the bottom. 
if you will have a hyperglycemia, you have on the opposite side all the steps and information about this one here as well. Okay, so this is not really, really hard. Okay, if you follow all of that, what I want to say to you is that revise it at home. Okay, remember whenever you're giving administration, uh, whenever you're giving uh, medication, whether you're doing Oscar 1 or Oscar 2 or Oscar 3, whatever, you know, you have to follow the safety checks at all times, whether it's subcard, IM or oral, just remember about that. Okay, uh, what else? Your teacher may ask you certain things during the practical assessment, you know, like what are the normal ranges for BGL, you know, and things like that, you know. They may ask you to perform neurological ops as well if someone who has hypo because the consciousness is going to be different, you know. If you ever seen someone who has a hypoglycemia, they look really clammy and pale, you know. Sometimes they even like can be unconscious if the sugar levels are really low uh, like i've seen sometimes someone who had like 2.1 and or 2.9 and the person would be like so drowsy you know can't stand or move or anything like it's um it's really difficult so um yeah so yeah that is going to be your part one for your practical uh i've been not tested uh, for anything else to be honest okay my one was hyperglycemia i didn't have angina scenario i only had hyperglycemia so um even with that one i still needed to do vital signs to start with you know on my patient this is like a basic thing that you need to do then I needed to do a management plan for hyperglycemia and then I needed to administer other medications as well apart from glucagon and things like that. So um, yeah, it wasn't that difficult really, but uh, yeah, it was interesting. I don't remember what I had for my theory part, guys. Like I tried to remember what was the theory part for Oscar 3, but I couldn't remember. I don't know. Maybe it was a handover that you would give to the coming sheet or a progress note again or something to write it down. Yeah, I don't remember. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I tried, but I couldn't remember. Anyway, what I want to tell you is Oscar is not as scary as it seems. Obviously, of course, from the first time when you will be performing it, you will feel scared, terrified, and, you know, and anxious and stuff like that. All sorts of feelings just because it's something new and you need and you know you need to pass it in order to go on your placement, in order to complete the whole semester, you know. But once you've done it, you will look at it back and you you would like... It wasn't that difficult really and then every semester your confidence will start to grow because you will learn more you will go on your placements you know you will practice things you will see how other nurses perform things and you slowly start to build that confidence bit by bit and you will feel not as scared as before when your Oscar exam come okay um, just do all your revisions follow your teachers uh, advices on what to read and revise before your Oscar and you should be fine like really guys you will be okay I believe in you I know you will be great nurses you know and most of the people do finish the course pass all the Oscars and they're all fine <laughs> as long as you read and study you will be okay <laughs> so uh, yeah that's all what I wanted to say in this Oscar in this Oscar video I wish you all the best for the upcoming Oscar when you have yours I know you can do it as I said and uh, yeah like you can share your experience in the comments below once you complete yours and just tell me how it was you know and uh, like you will remember me saying like once you finish it you will see that it wasn't as difficult as it seemed in the beginning <laughs> so you will be fine anyway if you have any questions you can leave them as well in the comment section below as usual and I'll try to answer them all and until now I will see you in my next videos bye